In the first part of this lesson, we talked about capacitors connected in series. We talked about how the total capacitance can be obtained and how that can be used in calculations. Well, in today's, in this part, we will look at how capacitors are connected in parallel. I want you to watch how capacitors are connected in parallel. Well, it is rather difficult for me to show you all the capacitors because one is kept behind the other. In a parallel connection, look at this, capacitor 1, capacitor 2, capacitor 3, and I'm going to tilt this so that you can have a look at all the three capacitors. Now, capacitor 1, capacitor 2, capacitor 3. And what's the specialty here? If you look at that, on the right side, that is your right side, each of this is the positive end of the capacitors. And what have I done to the positive end? I have connected the positive end of the first capacitor to the positive end of the second capacitor and then to the positive end of the third capacitor. So the positive ends of all three capacitors are connected. That means they are connected means they are actually one single point. There is no difference between now this, this and this. They are all connected. Similarly, the negative end of the first capacitor is connected to the negative end of the second capacitor. And that negative end of the second capacitor is connected to the negative end of the third capacitor. So all the negatives are connected together. So what happens in a parallel connection is all capacitors are just connected across just two points. Now, watch this again. This, this, this are all the same point. If I now connect something to this, it is also connected to that because each of these is connected. Now, where do I connect my battery? I have connected three capacitors in parallel. It means the three capacitors, all the three positive poles are connected together to one point and all the negatives are connected together to the points. And the battery is connected across those two points. That means I can now connect the battery. Now I can connect the battery either between these two points or between these two points of the second capacitor or between these two points, any of those, because this, this, and this are the same points. Similarly, this, this, and this are the same points. So I'm going to connect the battery across those two common points. Now, what you notice here is the battery is there. Okay. That means the positive end of the battery is connected to the positive ends of each of the capacitor. And the negative end of the battery is connected to the negative poles of each of the capacitor. That means if there is a total potential V on the battery, then the potential difference across the first capacitor will be the same because I have connected the battery across that capacitor. The potential difference across the first capacitor will be V. The potential difference across the second capacitor also is V. And the potential difference across the third capacitor is also V. You see that? So, when capacitors are connected in parallel, and a battery is connected across the common point, each of the capacitor will have the same potential difference across them. That is an important point. Well, let's draw this diagram and talk more about it. Here we have three capacitors 
one of capacitance C1, the other of capacitance C2, and a third of capacitance C3 are connected in parallel. And look at the way the positive of each of those is connected to A, and the negative of each is connected to B. That means the positive plates of each represent the same point and the negative of each represents the same point and the battery is connected across AB. That means the potential difference that you provide that is provided by the battery is the potential difference between points A and B. What is the potential difference between A and B? is the potential difference provided by the battery that is V. But capacitor C1 is connected across AB. That means the potential difference across the first capacitor is 6 volt. The potential difference across the second capacitor also is 6 volt because it is also connected between points A and B. And the potential difference across C3 is also V volt because it is also connected between A and B. And that is the characteristics of a parallel connection. When several electrical components are connected in parallel, they all will have the same potential difference across their end. Don't forget this. The main difference between a parallel connection and a series connection. In a parallel connection, the potential difference between the ends of, the, of each will be the same, equal to the total potential. In a series connection, the total potential will divide among each. All right, let's write it down. Three capacitors of capacitances, C1, C2, and C3, are connected in parallel across two points A and B. If the total charge, we didn't talk about a charge so far, let's now talk about a charge. If the total charge drawn from the battery is Q, when that total charge comes to point A, you can see a part of it will go through capacitor 1, a second part will go through capacitor 2, and the third part will go to capacitor 3 so that the sum of those three will be equal to the total charge. Alright, you watch again that difference. If the total charge drawn from the battery is Q, it is divided into Q1 for C1, Q2 for C2, and Q3 for C3 so that Q1 added to Q2 added to Q3 will be equal to the total charge. So, again I want you to find the difference between a series connection and a parallel connection. In a series connection, the total charge is the same in each capacitor. The total charge remains the same, but the potential difference, the, the total potential will divide. In a parallel connection, the total potential will remain the potential will remain the same for each capacitor, which will be the same as the total potential. But the total charge will divide Q1 for C1, Q2 for C3, and Q3 for C3. So that we can write Q the total charge equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Since each capacitor is connected across the same two points, the potential difference across each of them is the same and is equal to the total potential V supplied by the battery. So, if you now divide this equation by V, each of the term by V, we will be able to obtain a relation between the individual capacitances and the total capacitance. 
So V1 equal to V2 equal to V3 equal to V, the potential difference across the first capacitor equal to the potential difference across the second capacitor equal to the potential difference across the third equal to the total potential. Why? Because all of them are connected across the same two points. So, we have a charge equation Q equal to Q1 plus Q2 plus Q3. Divide this equation by V, what do you get? Q over V equal to Q1 divided by V plus Q2 divided by V plus Q3 divided by V. But what is Q over V? Q over V equal to C. Q is the total charge. V is the total potential. Therefore, Q over V will be C, the total capacitance. Q1 over V, Q1 is the charge on C1, and V is the potential across. Therefore, Q1 over V is C1. Similarly, Q2 over V is C2, and Q3 over V is C3. So, if C is the total capacitance, then Q over V equal to C, Q1 over V equal to C1, Q2 over V equal to C2, and Q3 over V equal to C3. Therefore, what is the equation for capacitance when they are connected in parallel? The total capacitance C equal to C1 plus C2 plus C3. You see, when capacitors are connected in parallel, the total capacitance will be the sum of the capacitances of all the capacitors. So, when do you connect capacitors in parallel? You connect them in parallel when you want a capacitance value which is greater than the values you already have. And when do you connect them in series? When you need a capacitance that is smaller than the ones you have. Okay. Let's see if we can uh, see a web animation. Let me see. Now, here is an interactive experience.